Hi, this is the Narrow Dose Ministry. I'm your Bible teacher, Minister Dennis Rogers. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I'm starting a new teaching. I did a teaching on coverage just now, moving into the sanctity of sex. We're going to be looking at lesbianism and homosexuality, which is overtaking our society today, which is running rapid in our communities, especially in the black community. Here at the Narrow Dose Ministry, you guys know what we do, do. We define our words. We go back to the original text. We do have the original text of the Bible, which is the interlinear Bible. We use word study books such as the Keyword Study Bible, Strong's Concordance. We use dictionaries, and we use McClintock's and Strong's Encyclopedia. We also have other different varies of books that we use in our studies, such as, such as commentaries on Leviticus. We go back, we go back to the ancient and the pagan, ancient and pagan and modern Christian symbols. We go back, we use books like the two Babylons, Alexander Hislop, religion of the Shemites, which talks about the lineage of Shem, so on, so on, and so on. We are a Bible study group. We study the Word of God. The Word of God says, study to show thyself approved, a work man that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word rightly dividing is the word ortho tomeo, which means to make a straight cut. comes from the word ortho, which means straight, and the word tomeo, T-O-M-E-O. That's where we get our word, our English word tomahawk from. Many of you guys don't understand why we define words. The English Bible is not the infallible word of God. The infallible word of God is the textus receptus. That is the original text, the original Hebrew the original Greek. When Jesus the Christ walked the earth, there was no such thing as an English language. The English language is a language of a harlot. It has length and it has width, but it has no depth of meaning. I had the unfortunate, I had the un, the unfortunate, uh, the unfortunate time to uh, view a young man on TV who called himself Dawa. That was a very unfortunate experience that I had. That's the word I was looking for. I had a very unfortunate experience to hear him talk about homosexuality and lesbianism and how homosexuality and lesbianism is of white Anglo-Saxon. Homosexuality and lesbianism is not of white Anglo-Saxon. When the Bible began to speak of homosexuality, which we back in the 70s call them faggots, and uh, lesbianism, which we back in the 70s, 60s call them bull daggers, back in those days, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Bible, when it speaks of bull daggers, faggots, gays, homosexuals, whatever you want to call them, those men and women, women with women and men with men, that is an abomination to God. It's the word toiba. That is an abomination of God. When the Bible speaks of that, it does not start with white Anglo-Saxon. It begins with Egypt and the Canaanites. From God's point of view, according to the scripture, the first faggots, the first bull daggers, gays, homosexuals, lesbians, whatever you want to call it, begin in Egypt. That's where it began at. Let us turn our Bibles to uh, Genesis chapter 10. Let us turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 10. Amen. Here right here to my here right here to my left, I have a poster here. Here to my left, thank you. You got to pay attention. I got a poster here. Here on this poster you can see I got it on the lineage of Ham. On that poster on the lineage of Ham, that's what we're going to find find out what lineage it is that God speaks of the Bible that talks about those that was caught up in homosexuality and lesbianism. Now, we're going to begin reading. Leave it right there, mix it. We're going to begin reading at Leviticus, Genesis. I mean, Genesis chapter 10, <clears throat> and we want to look at the lineage. We want to look at <clears throat> Genesis chapter 10, and what we want to look at, saints of God, we want to look at Genesis chapter 10, and we want to pick it up at verse number 6. Genesis chapter 10, 
<clears throat> and verse number 6. I'm going to be moving around you guys over there. So when you get to verse number 20, whoever well, read verse number 20, you let me know. As a matter of fact, just call out your verse when you read, okay? Amen. All right. Come on, start reading for me, Calvin Gillette, at verse number, uh, the Lena Jaham, verse number 6. Genesis 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham. Okay. You, as you, if you look on here, I got Ham right there. That's Ham right there. Out of Ham, out of Ham come 30 nations. You got 30 nations that come out of Ham. We're looking at the lineage of Ham now. We're looking at the lineage of Ham. Go ahead, read. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizram and Foot. Okay, you got them at the top. And right here I got Cush. Over here you got Foot. You got Mizram and you got who else? Canaan. And you got and you got who else? Canaan. Okay, you got Cush. Who was the second son? Mizram. Mizram, that's Mizram right here. I got it right on Mizram. I'm trying Foot. to make sure y'all, you guys out there can see this. That's why I'm moving the camera. Then you got Foot, which is his, his, his third son, right? Correct. And the last son you got is who? Canaan. You got Canaan. Out of Canaan, that's where you get the Canaanites, okay? Go ahead and read. Verse 7. And the sons of Cush are Seba. You got Seba right here. I'm showing you on the map. There goes Seba right there. The next one is Havila. Havila, the next one is Sapta. Sapta. Go ahead. And Rama. You got Rama right at, you got Rama right there up under the bottom. Go ahead. Septica. Septica, go ahead. And the sons of Rama. Uh-huh. Are Sheba and Dedan. Sheba and Dedan. Go ahead. Verse 8. And Cush begat Nimrod. And Cush begat Nimrod. That's where you got Nimrod. And if you can see right there where I got Nimrod at, that's where you get your Canaanites, your Amorites, your Hittites, your Gergeshites, your Berbershites. He's telling you to speak up. You must don't got your mic up under your mouth. You don't. You got your mic to the side. It need to be up under your mouth. What you need to do is move your mic. There you go, son. You need to move your mic. Okay. Pick it up for him, Vernell, till he get his mic right on verse number nine. Verse, Verse number nine, V. Nine, and he, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That's who? Who is the mighty hunter? Nimrod. Nimrod is the mighty hunter before the Lord. Nimrod comes out of the lineage of who? who is, what lineage does Nimrod come out of? Nimrod comes out of the lineage of Ham. Okay, you're reading about the lineage of Ham, saints of God. That's what we want them to understand. Remember, we're reading about the lineage Amen. of Ham. You're looking at Ham's lineage. These are the descendants that you're looking at, the beginning in verse number six, that comes from Ham. Keep that in mind, because we're going to go through the scripture and show them that lesbianism and homosexuality did not begin with no white Anglo-Saxon, did not begin with the lineage of Japheth. It began with the lineage of Ham. What color are those people? Black. Black. Them black folks. I am not a Hamite. I'm from the lineage of Shem. Chip, uh, Japheth had two sons. If you look at this board right here, what I got, you can see the lineage of Japheth right here at the top. That is the lineage of Japheth. Japheth was the first born of Noah. Shem was second born. Shem was not the first born son of Noah. Shem was the second born son of Noah. The blessing always goes to the second born all throughout scripture. Some would say you'll find in some books, you find some of these Hebrew Israelites telling you that Shem was first born. Shem was not first born. Shem was second born. Shem was second born. Japheth was first born. Ham was the youngest son. It say Japheth, the elder in the Bible. Here you have the lineage of Shem. This is Shem's lineage right here. You have Shem's lineage right here that I'm showing here. Shem, if you see, Shem had the largest lineage. Okay? Then you have Ham, which I'm showing you down at the bottom. That is the lineage of Ham that you see down at the bottom. Let me zoom back in on Ham. All right, pick it up, uh, Calvin, at verse number 10. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalne in the land of Shinar. Okay, 
Go ahead. Out of that land went forth Asher and built at Nineveh and the city Rehoboth and Kala. Okay. And Rezin b- between Nineveh and Kala, the same is a great city. Okay. And Mizraim begat Ludim. Okay, you can see Ludim right there. You can see him. I got it right up there. Mizraim. You can see Mizraim or above Mizraim at number 11, if you can see it, is Ludim. Go ahead. And Mizraim begat Ludim and Anamim and Lehabim uh-huh. and Naphtumim uh-huh. and Pathrusim. You should be at verse 14, am I right? Verse 14. That's right. I said you should be there. Am I right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Keep going. And Kaslohim, out of whom came Philistim, and Kaphtarim. Those are the Philistines, correct? Amen. Yes, they is. IV, pick it up. And Canaan begat. What verse you at? Verse 15. All right, go ahead. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. Verse 16. And the Jebusite. There you, if you look at the boy, you can see the Jebusite. And the Amorite. You can see the Amorite. And the Gergesite. You can see the Gergesite. Verse 17. And the Havite. The Havite. And the Archite. The Archite. And the Sinite. The Sinite. Verse 18. And the Arvite. The Arvite. And the Zimmerite. The Zimmerite. And the Ham- Hamathite. And the Hamathite. Okay. You look there, you can see a modern Hamite. All of you guys out there know, if you see a modern-day Hamite today, first thing that a modern-day Hamite going to tell you is that you is not his brother. Amen. That's the first thing that modern-day Hamite is going to tell you is that you is not no kid to him. We come out of the literature, Shem. I am not no African. Amen. I did not come out of no Africa. Israel's were scattered all over the face of the earth. That's the ten northern tribes when jesus came back on the face of the earth there was no tribes left there was only two tribes back and that was judah and his little brother benjamin the rest of them is scattered all over the face of the earth that's why james write to those scattered across the face of the earth okay all right mix it thank you you got to pay attention son all right verse number 19 Pick it up, uh, V and read. Verse number 19. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Thank you very much. Sodom and Gomorrah was full of what type of people? What did they call? Look at your Bible before you answer. What was in Sodom and Gomorrah? Who was in Sodom and Gomorrah? Jebusites. Who was in Sodom and, and, and Gomorrah? Look at down there at verse number 19. Who was in Sodom and Gomorrah? Verse number 19, the saints Canaanites, of God. The Canaanites. The Canaanites. Everybody look at verse number 19, saints of God. And the border of the Canaanites. So you got Canaanites down in Sodom and Gomorrah. You don't have no white Anglo-Saxon down in Sodom and Gomorrah. Japheth. Japheth. Is not in Sodom and Gomorrah. Shem is not in Sodom and Gomorrah. You got Canaanites in Sodom and Gomorrah. And what color are those people? Black. Black. Those are black people. Modern day, they call them what? African. They call them Africans. Okay? We want to make that clear. Because Mr. Dawa want to get on the television. And the rest of y'all want to put all the homosexuality and the lesbianism all on the white man. Mm. No, it is not the white man that is first spoken of in the scripture as being a homosexual and as a lesbian. It is the black man. As a matter of fact, it's talking about the African that was down there in Egypt. All right? So now, let's go from there. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis chapter 13. Come on, let's move quickly. Genesis chapter 13. Because we're going to move through here quickly. So we can get to the thrust of the message. Genesis chapter 13, verse number 10. Carolyn, read, please. Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Before who? Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. Even as the garden of the Lord, 
like the land of Egypt, as thy comest into Zoar. Keep going. Then, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, uh -huh. and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Okay, verse number 12. Verse 12, Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan. Okay. And Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. Uh-huh. And pitched his tent toward Sodom. Uh-huh. Verse 13, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. They was what? They was homosexuals, wasn't they? Amen. Yes, they was homosexuals. That's, why they, that's what they was doing. They was making love to each other. Who was these men that was in Sodom? They was the Canaanites. Hello? Amen. All right, then let's go to uh, verse, let's go to 14. 14. Are you there? Amen. What we're doing is, what we're doing is, we are establishing that the men and the women that was in Africa was the first lesbians and homosexuals. The Bible does not state the Holy Scriptures does not state that Japheth was a homosexual or lesbian, does it? Amen. No. It begins with the Hamites, not Shem, not Japheth. Okay? We had Genesis 14, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Pick it up, verse number 2. Come on, Armor Bear. Verse number 2. That these made war with Ben Bera, king of Sodom. So he king of Sodom, he king of the homosexuals, ain't he? Amen. Verse number 8. And there went out the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adama, the king of Zeboim, the king of Bela, the same is Zoar. They joined battle with them in the vale of Siddim. Verse number 10. And the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits. The kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. They that remained fled to the mountains. What did I keep reading? Go ahead and read 12. And they took Lot, Abram's brother, son, who dwelt in Sodom, his goods, and departed. Thirteen. And there came one that had escaped, and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eschol, and brother of Anar, and these were confederate with Abram. Abram. And when Abram heard that, th that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servant. Who was his brother that was taken captive? Lot. 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 What is Abram? Is he a Jew? No. What is he? He's Hebrew. a Hebrew. He's a Hebrew. Go ahead. Born in his house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Paul never said he was a Jew or the Jew, did he? No, sir. Paul said he was a what? Hebrew. Hebrew. Paul Hebrews. said he was a Hebrew or the Hebrews. That's what we are. We are Hebrews. Spiritual Amen. Jews. Uh, in the flesh, we are Hebrews. That means we're nomadic wonders, Amen. ones without a home. Amen. Hello? Amen. Read, son. Verse 15. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, also brought again his brother Lot, his goods, the women also, and the people. Verse Look. 17. Yes. Uh, that's, no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Shedoloma and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheva, which is the king's dale. Pick it up at 22. And Abram said. Pick it up at 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, give me the persons, take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Verse 23, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latch, that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram, Abram rich. Thank you very much. Let's go to 19. So we, well, what we're doing is establish that Sodom is an African land or the land of Ham or the land of Egypt or the land of Canaan, which is a Canaanite. Amen. Now, we already know that Canaan is cursed, right? Amen. God already cursed Canaan, right? Amen. Let's go to the ninth chapter of Genesis and validate that because Canaan is already cursed. He can't, uh, Noah couldn't curse Ham because God had already blessed him, right? right? Amen. So he cursed his son Canaan, whom he knew was going to be born. Hello? Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 9. Are we there? Amen. Genesis Amen. chapter 9. 
Let's pick it up in verse number 24. Genesis 9, 24. Amen. Come on, uh, Armour Bear, read. And Noah woke from his wine, knew what his younger son As had a done. matter of fact, let's, let's pick it up in verse number 18. And let's Amen. pick it up in verse number 18, Armour Bear. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And see, that's the way they, that, that's why they say that, help me, Holy Spirit, that's why they say that Shem is the firstborn because he listed first in the Bible. Amen. But you look at Japheth, Japheth is listed last, and he the elder. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's listed in the Bible as pertains to what relationship they had with God. Shem had the relationship with God. Amen. That's why it comes first. Go ahead, read. Verse number 18, read, Amabel. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. Yes, sir, and that's why it's put there. Let us know exactly who Canaan came from. That mm. Canaan came from Ham, which is the African, which is Egypt. Hello? Amen. Which is uh, the Ethiopians, burnt faced people, whatever you want to call them. But this is the black race. Hello? Mm. Amen. Verse number 19. Go ahead. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. You best believe it. So you come from one of them boys right there. Amen. One of them boys. Go ahead. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine. Was drunken, he was uncovered within his tent. Go ahead. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, told his two brethren without. The nakedness of the father is the who? The, the, wife. the wife. The wife. The nakedness of the father is the wife. Go ahead. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon both their shoulders, went backwards, covered the nakedness of their father, their faces were backwards, they saw not their father's nakedness. 24. Come on, Carolyn. And Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. His younger son. Who was the younger son? Ham. Ham is the younger son. Keep reading. And he said, curse be Canaan. He can't curse, he can't, he can't curse him, can he? No. no. He can't curse him because in verse number 9, in chapter 9, verse number 1, what do it say, V? And God bless Noah and his son. That's enough right there. You can't go no further. God bless right. Noah and his son. So... Noah cannot reverse the uh, blessing, the blessing that God had put on the sons already. That's right. So he can't curse his son, so he, he can't curse Ham. So he cursed Ham's son, which is Canaan. Hello? Amen. Come on, pick it up, Carolyn. Verse number 24. Number 24. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall be unto his brother. Come on. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Uh-huh. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Okay. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. Uh-huh. And all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Okay, then. All right, then. Let's go back over to uh, where we was at, 19. Genesis 19. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Genesis 19. Give me verse number 1. Come on, V. Pick it up. Verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Keep going. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. So they what? What are these men? They're homosexual. Uh, they are homosexual. Amen. They want to know these men. They're intimate. Hello? Amen. Yes, their interest in them is a sexual interest. Yes, That's sir. what they interest. The interest they have in them is an interest of sex. They don't want to know their name. They don't want to meet them. Mm -mm. They want to lie down with them. Right. Verse 6, read. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. But call out these men is out there that want these two angels that don't came. Black right. folk. Where did they come from? Sodom and Gomorrah. Where did they come from? Canaan. Canaan, Canaan thank you right. very much. Go ahead, read. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Uh-huh. So you know they don't want to know their name. That's right. right. But they want to do something wicked to right. them. Right. They want to lie down with them. Right. Keep going. Behold now. 
I have two daughters which have not known man. That mean they what? Virgin. They virgin. I got two virgin daughters you can take right here. Mm-hmm. You can go ahead on and lay down with them, do what you want to do with them, but don't come in here trying to lay down with these men, right? Mm-hmm. Amen. All right then. At this time, there is no law. Remember that. Amen. We're in the book of Genesis. We're in the book of beginnings. So if we're in the book of beginnings, which Genesis is the book of beginnings, beginning. homosexuality begins with who? With the black, black folks. folks. With who? Canaanites. The Canaanites, Canaanites which is the lineage of who? Ham. Which Ham. is the lineage of Ham. It begins, come on, mix it. It begins with the lineage of Ham. It begins with these Canaanites down at Sodom, which we already verified in the 10th chapter of the book of Genesis. Hello? Amen. Amen. Come on, V, read. Uh, Genesis 19, 8. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes, only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn. Who was the one fellow that came in to sojourn? Where did Lot move in at? Sodom and Gomorrah. He moved into Sodom. Sodom. Mm -hmm. He moved into Sodom. Hello? That's where where he living at. He living down there in Sodom. Right. But with them old nasty Saddam. people, right? Amen. All right? Hold your place there. You stay there, V. Hold your place there. And run over to Second Peter right quick. And let's see what Peter had to say about what was happening to Lot down there. Let's go to Second Peter. Go to Second Peter. And I think I want chapter. I want chapter three. Amen. Amen. Hello? Amen. That's what I want. Second Peter chapter three or chapter two. And I want verse number uh four. Start at let's start at verse number uh four, Calvin. Second Peter chapter two, verse four, please read. Second Peter two verse four. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment and spared not the old world but saved Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly so ain't no homosexual ain't no lesbian that's in the church directing the choir just because they got the name Jesus upon their lips and they paid tithes been dipped in some water and eat some cracker and grape juice just because they go through those rituals in some old Baptist church, especially the Pentecostal church. Mm. You find more gays and lesbians in the Pentecostal movement than you find anywhere else. Amen. Just because they've been dipped in some water, take some cracker and grape juice, pay some tithes, go, go to pastor's anniversary, go to conferences, Got a robe on a direct choir. They still ungodly, aren't they? Amen. Amen. You still going to hell. Verse number six. Read it again, Calvin. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Seven. And delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. The word conversation means behavior. Mm. Go ahead. Verse number eight. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Thank you very much. Let's go back over there to Genesis chapter 19. Peter verified it for us. Let us know what they was down there doing by way of the Holy Spirit. They was down there living ungodly. These men was and they was not white folk. Dawa, <clears throat> why you sitting up there with your red on, with your red and your green and your yellow necklace on African shape represent Africa red for the blood green for the land and gold and yellow for the gold that they stole them was the nastiest people that was on the face of the earth at that time Amen. the Egyptians and them Canaanites them Africans and they still are the nastiest people that's on the face of the earth right now you go down to Africa and see still doing the same thing Hey, the nastiest people is on the face of the earth. Yes, they are, according to the scripture. And what we have learned, what Shem learned was, Shem learned to do the same thing that they was did, and Shem did worse than they did. Amen. Shem, the Hebrew Israelite did. 
That's who Japheth got it from. Japheth up in the mountains on all fours. That's right. That's what Japheth had at this time. Read the verse number eight. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. Black folks, them, them, them Hamites, mm-hmm. them Canaanites stole Lot. Get out the way, boy. Stand back. Go ahead. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they passed so upon the Press. man. Press. And they pressed so upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place? For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Because they was what? Why did God send him to destroy it? All we got to do, we ain't got to guess. Why did God send him to destroy it? Somebody tell me you ain't got to guess. If you're paying attention, why did God send him to destroy it? Go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis chapter 13. You got to give me some scripture. Why did God want to destroy it? Genesis 13 verse number 13. They were wicked and sinners. What? They were wicked and sinners. Whoa, 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 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked, wicked. and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Thank you very much. Exceedingly. exceedingly. Right. They weren't just wicked and sinners, was they? No. They, were they was wicked, wicked and sinners before who? The Lord. The Lord. Exceedingly, they was the nastiest people on the face of the earth mm-hmm. at this time. And this time that we read, time fact is 1898 B.C. It's 1898 B.C. Japheth ain't even on the scene. Japheth ain't even mentioned in the book of Genesis. You ain't going to find Japheth mentioned in this book. Hello? Amen. I wish they had a witness. Nobody but these Hamites and these Shemites. That's what you're going to be. That's who you're going to be running into. Hello? Amen. You best believe it. Verse number 14, V. Read. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law. Which was, what, what was wrong with that? What was wrong with them? They, they, must have been they, was, they was homosexual. How we know they was homosexual? Because they knew not his daughters. Because they knew not his daughters. His daughters were still virgin. virgin. They were virgin. Daughters still virgin. They was faggots. His daughters still virgin. <laughs> they ain't even had no man yet. Read, V. You had never consummated the marriage. Go ahead. You best believe it. <laughs> Read, son. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But watch this. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son and sons-in-law. Thank you very much. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters. Lead them faggots there. Because right. they don't want to go no way. Right. Come on now. That's why Lot, that's why Lot daughters, when Lot, them, go ahead, man, just go ahead and read. Right, go ahead and read. Was going. <laughs> go ahead and read. I did with the daddy. Go ahead. We're going to show it. Go ahead and read. Amen. Go ahead Arise, and read. Take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Mm-hmm. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth. And sent him without the city. Come on, Calvin 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Come on, son, come on. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight. And thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saying, Saving. And saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, behold now, this city is What near. city? City of Sodom. Sodom. Thank you very much. Let, let them know what city we're talking about. Go ahead. Behold, this city is near to me. 
is near to, flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. There can't be Sodom. There got to be another city. Go ahead and read those. Zohar. Haste thee. I think that's Zohar. It is. Zohar. That's Zohar. Amen. That's the city of Zohar. That's the city right there that he's talking about. Z-O-A-R. Go ahead. Haste thee. That's the only Haste one he didn't destroy. He destroyed all of them but Zohar. For I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. There you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There we go. The go sun, ahead. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Light, right? Yes, Amen. Sir. Let's believe it. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities that which grew upon the ground. Thank you very much. Them Canaanites down there, them nasty, stinking Africans down there, the lineage of Ham. That's who he destroyed down there. Burn up. He burnt them up. Those are the inhabitants right there. Dawa. Wasn't no white folk down there. Wasn't no Caucasians down there. Pick it up, Calvin, verse number 25. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city. Everything that was around it. Amen. Everything that was around it. Not just Sodom and Gomorrah. The cities that we read about over there in Genesis with Abraham. Everything that was around it. The only city that was left was Zoar. Everything else around there, he de- everything else around there, he destroyed. Keep reading. And that which grew up on the ground. You best believe it. Go ahead. But his wife looked back from behind him. You don't never tell us that God don't kill. God killed them all. Go ahead. And she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. He in the land of Canaan. He looking over there where Lot was. Go ahead. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, sir. And toward all the land of the plain. Come on. And beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up at, as the smoke of a furnace. 29. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities. When who the destroyed the cities? God. God. When God destroyed the cities. Hmm. Tell me God don't kill. When God destroyed the cities. Go ahead, son. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham. Yes, sir. And sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. Come on. When he overthrew the cities in, in the which Lot dwelt. Come on. And Lot went up out of Zor. That's right. And dwelt in the mountain. That's right. And his two daughters with him. Yep. For he feared to dwell in Zor. Come on. And he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. Come on. And the firstborn said unto the younger. Come on. Our father's old. Yes, sir. And there's not a man in the earth to come in <laughs> to us after the manner of all the earth. We in Genesis, so this is not incest. Amen. This is not incest. No law. Because this is Genesis. There is no, no law. law. Amen. Keep reading. And the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is dead, and there's not a man oh, in the earth oh, oh. is old. And there's not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve the seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morning, on the morrow, that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father. I lay yesterday night. Yesterday night. Come on, son. Start over verse 34. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father. Yesterday night. You want to say last night? It says last night, my Bible, sir. Oh, it does? Yes, it does. Everybody else's Bible say last night. All right, all right, all right. All right, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Let Let us make him drink wine this night also. And go thou in and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. Yeah, he reading out a key word study. Yes, sir. That's why. Go ahead. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Okay. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Okay. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. Uh-huh. The same as the father of the Moabites until this day. Okay. And the younger, she also bare a son mm-hmm. and called his name <clears throat> Benami. Right. And she is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. 
The same as the father of the children of Ammon until this day. Now, we don't establish that lesbianism, homosexuality, begin where? In Sodom and Gomorrah. Gomorrah. Now, God <clears throat> elected and chose Jacob, changed his name to Israel, and his sons to represent him on the face of the earth. So let's turn our Bibles to Leviticus chapter 18. Amen. Uh, we, live in a, we live in a sex-saturated society. That's Amen. what we live in. It smiles on monogamous marriages. This society encourages abortion as a means of birth control, promotes and endorses kinky sex as a means of entertainment, claims that moral absolutes don't exist, and really believes that people can violate moral standards and escape the consequences. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18. Amen. Let's go to Amen. Leviticus chapter 18. These people, these people are in the wilderness now. The people haven't been number checked. They haven't took a census of the people. God has given these people on instructions on how he wants them to live when, he get, when they get into the land that he promised to their fathers, who are who? Abraham, Abraham, Abraham Isaac. Isaac, and Jacob. God describes the relationship and how he wants these people to live as being his people. Hello? Amen. Pick it up, verse number one. Come on, uh, Carolyn, verse number one. Leviticus chapter 18, verse number one. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwell, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I will bring you, shall you not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. Okay. He said, I'm br I, I, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. What you seen them do down there in Egypt, I do not want you to do after those people. You're going into the land of Canaan. What they are doing in that land, as God is telling them right now, it is happening in that land, what we're getting ready to read in Leviticus 18 right now. What they are doing in that land, we do not want you to do after them either. Amen. Right? Amen. All right. Leviticus chapter 18. One through five. Come on, uh, Carolyn, pick it up at verse number four. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Authority, verses one through five. There are several reasons why the Lord gives clear instructions concerning personal sectional, sexual hygiene. Sexual morality and marriage. For one thing, we are created in the image of God, and the Creator knows what's best for His creation. God certainly wants married couples to enjoy the brutal, the, the brutal gift of sex. It's nothing wrong with sex. The only thing it is is sex is only permitted to those that are married. Amen. He also wants them to avoid the terrible consequences that come when His laws are violated. God had chosen Israel to be the channel through which his son would come into the world. It was important that the channel be sanctified. That's Israel. The breakdown of marriage in the Hebrew society, the adopting of pagan practices could threaten the plan of God for their redemption. This seems to be the emphasis that's put in Malachi 2.15, which we're going to get into. I got to move kind of swift here because I want to read some of these scriptures. The Lord was seeking godly offspring that, came, that can come only from godly marriages. A Christian marriage. And when we talk about Christian, we're not talking about Christian according to Roman Catholicism and according to America's definition. Amen. We're talking about Christian according to the Bible definitions. Christians suffer for righteousness sake. What do you mean suffer for righteousness sake? We're going to suffer for righteousness sake because we're not going to put our approval on no homosexual nor no lesbian. And we're going to suffer. They're going to kill us for that. Because the law is going to be passed. Where a man can marry a man and a woman can be with a woman. It's happening right now. It's mainstream. You see everybody coming out the closet. They're in your Baptist churches. They're in your denomination. They're in your Pentecostal churches. They're in your churches of God in Christ. 
They in Roman Catholicism. It's becoming mainstream. They live right next door to you. They may be, your son may be one. Your daughter may be one. If they die in homosexuality, they die a lesbian, they going straight to hell. If, let me say this, you go to jail. Uh-oh. And while you in jail, you are homosexual. Why you in jail or lesbian? You come out of jail, Uh-oh. a homosexual and a lesbian. Or why you in jail being a homosexual or a lesbian? You get introduced to Islam. Mm. You stop being a homosexual and a lesbian and you go over to Islam. You still going to hell. You didn't receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Amen. Say that. <laughs> because you went and became a Muslim after you was a homosexual that you're not guilty. You still don't got no savior. Went from one sin to you understand another. what I'm saying? Because they think because they're homosexual. <laughs> Or they're a lesbian. And they go join the mosque over there with Farrakhan. And I ain't no homosexual. Mm. And no lesbian no more. Because I worship Allah. I'm safe. No, no, no. You're still going to hell. Because you didn't receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. He's the only savior. That's right. Let me get that out there right now. Because you got homosexuals. And lesbians in, 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 in Islam. Just like you got them in a Baptist church. Amen. It's mainstream. That's right. A Christian marriage should be a witness of the world of the love Christ had for his church. But if that marriage isn't pure and faithful, the witness is destroyed. If husbands and wives can't love each other as Christ loves the church, why invite their unsaved friends to be saved and share in Christ's love? Let's look at Leviticus chapter 18. Amen. Three times in this passage, God said, I am the Lord. Verse number two, read, Carolyn. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Verse number four, read thee. You shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Verse number five, read, Armabel. You shall therefore keep my statutes, my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. This phrase, I am the Lord, is used 42 times in Leviticus 18 through 26. That's all the authority we need for the standards that we hold. The Lord warned Israel not to look back and imitate the sins they saw in Egypt. Verse number three, Calvin Reed. 18.3, after the things, after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, Shall you not do? Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. He also warned them not to look around and imitate the sins of the Gentile nations. Verse number three. Read it again, Calvin. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall you not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. When the Hebrews enter Canaan, they will discover that the people... They, that were they were discovered that the people that the people were unspeakably immoral. Israel have to maintain a, a position of separation in order to be pleasing to the Lord. The church today must maintain that same position. Don't change. Supposed to separate from them homosexuals, them lesbians. They are not to be in the congregation at all. Verse number uh, six. Pick it up, V. Let's read. Let's get these verses in. Leviticus 18, verse 6. Read. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. Keep going. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou not uncover. Okay. Uncover the nakedness. When you see uncover the nakedness, that means have Sexual relations with. That's what uncover, C O V E R, nakedness means. Every time you see uncovered nakedness, 
Every time you see uncovered nakedness, uncovered nakedness means have sexual relations with. That's what uncovered nakedness means. And this is what, this is what, come on, Mixon, pick it up. This is what Ham Amen. and Cain and them was doing. Let's go, let's go over here and verify they was doing it. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20. Verse number 23. Come on, read, Armor Bell. And you shall not walk in the matter, manner of the nation. Hold on. He called Egypt and the Canaanites a nation. Mm -hmm. He called them a nation. They were Gentiles. Mm -hmm. He called them a nation. They Gentiles. They don't have to be white. They don't have to be Japheth to be a Gentile. Anyone that went out of the lineage of Shem was considered a Gentile. Amen. I don't care who they was. Yeah. These Canaanites were Gentiles. Nasty Gentiles, black Gentiles at that. Read, son. And you shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you. Come on. For they committed all these things. Therefore, I abhor them. Thou say, I hate them Egyptians. I hate them Canaanites down there. Because they nasty. Hmm. Verse number six. Read the 18.6. Come on, y'all. Come on, V. Amen. Amen. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. This law now, right? Yep. Yes. Did this, apply what, did this apply what Lot and his two daughters? No. no. Why? What wasn't no law. Was it no law? This law now. This law now. I had this lady tell me about a young man who was in church, and he asked the preacher, about incest, he said, if Adam, if God made Adam and Eve, and they were sisters and brothers, and they had sex, the preacher couldn't put them out. The preacher couldn't answer the question, couldn't tell them why, so he put the boy out to church. In the book of Genesis, you got God establishing mankind. That's what God is doing. There is no law, mm. so there is no incest. Yes, they married their mm. brothers and sisters and cousins, but when God Put that law down there. Uh -oh. When God put that law down there, that stopped all the marrying of brothers and sisters together. Mm -hmm. Because God instituted a what? A law. He instituted a law. That's right. Once God spoke that law, that's what a stop to it came in at an end at. Mm -hmm. Once he spoke it, that's when he made it good. Let's go to uh, Numbers 32 and 19 right quick. One, B, you got to stay there. You got to keep reading. Numbers 32 and 19. Numbers 32 and 19. Numbers 32 and 19. Amen. Amen. Come on, read, Armour Bell. We will not inherit. Is that Numbers 32 and 19? Yes, sir. You mean Exodus? No, 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 no. Numbers 32 and 19. Do I want 23 and 19? Yes, you want yes. 23, 19. Read by my God is not a man. That's it. That he should lie. Uh-huh. Neither the son of man. That uh -huh. he should repent. Right. How he said. Yep. Shall he not do it? Yep. How he spoken. Yep. Shall he not make it good? Once he said it, that was it. It's law. It's law now. <laughs> it's law now. Amen. And now he telling them, this has been going on in Egypt. This is going on in Canaan. I do not want you guys doing what they did in Egypt. And I do not want you, Israel, doing what they are doing in Canaan as I give you these laws. Amen. Read the verse number six. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. Seven. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou <clears throat> not uncover. That means you don't have no sexual relationships with. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Nimrod had sex with his mama, didn't he? Yes, Amen. he did. Yes, he uh, did, and we're going to prove it to you. We're going to read it to you. Nimrod had sex with his mama. That's right. They was down there in Egypt, and they over there in Canaan having sex with their mamas and their daddies. Mm. Okay? Amen. Okay? Let me prove that to you. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, Deuteronomy, quick. Let's go to Deuteronomy and prove it to you that they did it. Give you scripture. Let you know they did it. 
Uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Are you there? Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 30. Are you there? Are you there? Amen. Deuteronomy 12, 30. Take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them. Who is the them? The Canaanites. The, the them is, the, the, go to Deuteronomy 7. Y'all should know already. Y'all should know already. Who is the them? The them Amorites, is the Hittites, Gergeshites, Amorites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites. Seven nations. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse number one, when the Lord thy God shall bring you into the land, whether you go as to possess it, has cast out many nations, many nations, many nations, international Bible teacher, nations, these Hamites, these Hamites, the Hittites, the Gergeshites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, they nations, they Gentiles, Perizzites, Hivites. Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. We're still in the book of Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy 12, verse number 30. Take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them. After that, after that, they be destroyed from before thee. And that you inquire not after their gods. Saying, how did these Nations, Mr. International Bible teacher, <laughs> they nations. You keep talking about only Japheth, the white man, is a Gentile. God call these nasty Africans and these Canaanites nations. Serve their gods. Ain't no Japhethite over there, Mr. International Bible teacher, Mr. Hebrew Israelite, Dawa. Ain't no Japhethite in that land. Them Hamites and Canaanites, yeah, Canaan descendants and Ham descendants. Egypt is Mizraim. Mizraim is Egypt. These black Africans. Ain't no white folk over here. And he told Shem, Shem, you stay away from them bastards over there. You stay away from them nasty people because they're not God's children. A bastard is one without a father. They're not God's children. How did these, the only way they can become God's children, they got to be elected and chosen into the body of Christ. They got to be uh, elected by uh, God before the foundation of the world. That's the only way they can get in. Take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them Africans, them Hamites. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, that you inquired not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do in the same way. Likewise. You shall not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord, which he what? Hate us. Have they what? Done. They did it. They laid down with their mamas and they laid down with their daddies. They had sex with their mama. They had sex with their daddy. God say they did it. Every one of these abominations, which we're going to read. Chapter 18, verse number 7. Verse number 8. Read, V. The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. They did it, didn't they? Yep. They had sex with their father's wife. Didn't they? Yes, they did. Read, V. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Okay. Come on, Cleo, get it started, man. Don't wait for me. So get it started. Let's go.
All right, this is the second part in our teaching on the sanctity of sex. We're going right into our teaching. We in Leviticus 18. So grab your Bible and turn your Bible to Leviticus 18. We're looking at the sanctity of sex. We're looking at and validating that homosexuality and lesbianism did not be begin with white Anglo-Saxon America. Homosexuality and lesbianism begin down in Egypt in the land of Canaan with the Egyptians and the Canaanite. When the Bible speaks of sexual immorality, it starts with Sodom and Gomorrah. You can find the lineage of Ham in Genesis chapter 10, verses 6 through 20. You can trace it all the way through chapter 14, chapter 19 of Genesis, where Lot was living down in Sodom and Gomorrah, and God destroyed it because of the sexual immorality, because of homosexualism. And then we pick it up in Leviticus chapter 18. This is where God stopped mentioning the sexual sins that was going on in the lineage of Ham. Show the lineage of Ham, please. In the lineage of Ham, the lineage of Ham, you guys make sure you got your place at Genesis, at Deuteronomy chapter 7, so we can read these names. Make sure you hold your place there because you know you, you don't remember them, so we can read them. Let these people know who these people are. The lineage of Ham, out of Canaan, you get the Canaanites in Deuteronomy chapter 7. You out there, turn your Bibles there too, so you can know who these people is. These are Africans, modern day black people. That's who these people are down in Egypt and in the land of Canaan. These are the people that's in the land that God is going to destroy and run off the land and bring in the children of Israel to this land of flowed with milk and honey. Leviticus 18 tells us why God is running the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. He's telling us why he's putting these people, spewing these people out of the land because they have defiled his land. So we're going to pick it up. Leviticus chapter 18, verse number one. Uh, I'm about, I mean, Carolyn, start reading. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. So they seen some things happening down in Egypt that God was not pleased with. God is going to list these things. Tell the children of Israel what it is he does not want them to do that they seen going on in Egypt. Continue to read, Carolyn. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I will bring you, shall you not do, neither shall you walk in their ordinances. Come on, speak up. Go ahead. You shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Five. You shall do, therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man shall... With, I'm sorry. Five, ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Keep going. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. This is what happened with those in Genesis. When God was beginning his family, when God was starting the human race, they were able to approach their kin. Hello? Amen. Amen. Abraham Amen. married his sister which was Nahor, his brother's wife. Amen. Hello? Amen. So they were, they, they, they was, uh, they were permitted before the law Amen. to approach their kin mm -hmm. to keep this lineage pure and to keep this lineage one. Hello? Amen. So now, in Genesis, for you young people who don't know, since your pastor can't explain it to you, your Sunday school teacher don't know, and a dumb deacon on the deacon board don't know, there was no law in Genesis. Mm -hmm. You don't get the law until Exodus 20. Once you get the law in Exodus, then God tells them, no more incest. Amen. Hello? Amen. God tells them, no more incest. We got one thing, we got, we got a picture of Vince, we got a picture 
of what uh, I, I get when I get to the scripture, I'll, just, I'll go ahead and do that. Verse number next verse. Go ahead and read, Carolyn. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shall thy not uncover. Uncover means uncover means come on. Uncover means to have sexual relations with uncover nakedness means have sexual relations with. So every time you see uncover nakedness or uncover is saying have sexual relations with. Come on, Carolyn Reed. She is thy mother that shall not uncover her nakedness. You, you show, So you shouldn't have what? Sex with your mother. You shouldn't have sex with your mama, whether you male or female. I wish to had a witness. Read. The nakedness of thy father's wife that shall not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. So you don't have sex with your father's wife. No, sir. Go ahead. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother. She could be your stepsister. Don't matter, do it. That's no. Right. Go ahead. Whether she is born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness, that shall not uncover. That's what, that's what Absalom, that's what, no, that's what uh, David's son, Ammon, I believe, did to Tamar. Mm -hmm. That's what she did to Tamar. He had sex with his sister-in-law. Yep. Go ahead, read. Ten. Ten. The nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness, thou shalt not uncover, for there is thy own nakedness. Thank you very much. You don't have sexual relationship with your daughter Amen. or your daughter's daughter. Hello? Amen. Keep going. The nakedness of thy father's wife, daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. You don't have no sexual relationship with her. Verse number 12, Vernell. Thou should not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. So you shouldn't have sexual relationship with your father's sister. Amen. Go ahead. She is thy father's near kinswoman. 13. Thou should not uncover the nakedness. Thou should not have sexual relationship with your mother's mother sister. sister. Let's put it in there when you see uncover. Let's start using have sexual relationship with when you see uncover. Okay. Let's go, V. Verse 13. Thou should not have sexual relationships with... With your mother's with sister. Your mother's sisters. She is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou should not have sexual relationship with thy father's brother. Hold on, man. They was having sex with they with their uncle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Men they and was. women. Yeah. That's what that's what they was doing in Egypt. And where at? In Canaan. Canaan. In Canaan. Come on, stay with me. They was doing this. They was doing it. They was doing it. Had done it. And was doing it as God was giving them these laws right here. Amen. As Moses was speaking to them. They had done it and was doing it while he was speaking to them. This is 1490 B.C. Amen. Not no white Anglo-Saxon Dawa. Your so-called African ancestors. Because they show one mind. Because I'm from the lineage of Shem. Amen. We weren't doing that. No, sir. Talk back with me. Amen. We didn't know nothing about that. Amen. Talk back with Amen. me. Shem didn't know nothing about that. Shem just seen what was going on. He wasn't involved. Right. That's why God giving him these laws right here. Amen. Read. Thou shalt not have sexual relationship with thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. Thou shalt not have sexual relations with with thy daughter-in-law, she is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not have sexual thou relationships have with sexual her. Relationship. When you see uncover her nakedness, yet is have sexual, sexual relationship with. Verse 16. Thou, thou shalt not have sexual relationship with your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not have sexual relationships with a woman and her daughter. Neither shall you take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to have sexual relationships with them. They are her near kinswoman. It is what? Wickedness. 18. Go ahead, V. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her to have sexual relationships besides the other in her lifetime. Right. Let me show you what he's talking about right here. Go to the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. This is what I want you to understand. Go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. We want Genesis. 
I got it here. Genesis 38. This is what he's talking about. Let's go to Genesis 38. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Genesis 38. Mm. Verse number. Pick it up at verse number one. Come on, Calvin. And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adelmite, Adelmite whose name was Hira. Mm -hmm. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite. Okay, what's, what's going on now? We in Genesis. What's going on now? They're having sexual relations. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We in Genesis. They're going, he, 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 he Judah. Y'all know who Judah is? Yeah. yeah. Who is Judah? Jacob's son. Fourth born son, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You see a Canaanite, right? right? Yes. So what's going on right now? Oh. Judah and the Canaanite. What's going on right now? No law. No law. Okay. You're not supposed to have a Canaanite. Because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to have a Canaanite right. up under the law. Mm -hmm. No law in Genesis. Right. Okay. Right. No law in Genesis. Amen. Well, that's why actually what's going on. Because no law in Genesis. Mm -hmm. So what's going on over in Leviticus don't apply over in Genesis. Right. Because right. it ain't no law. Mm -hmm. Because you can't marry a Canaanite. Right. Can't marry no Canaanite if you're Israelite. Right. Mm -hmm. Can't marry no Canaanite if you're Israelite. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right then. Well, we in Genesis now. Right. So it ain't no law. No law. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Hello? Mm -hmm. Amen. Read, Carolyn. Verse number two. And Judah saw that there was a and Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite. Thank you very much. Who name was Shua. So what color is she? Black. black. She black. Go ahead. And he took her and went in into her. Uh-oh. Go ahead. And she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Ur. Go ahead. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. He went into her two times, didn't he? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And she yet conceived, again conceived. Good God Almighty, he gone, ain't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> Go ahead. And called his name Shula. Come he, on. He was at Shazib when she bare him. Uh huh. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Uh huh. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Don't tell us what he did. Just said he was That's wicked sure. and God killed him. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. So don't tell us God don't kill. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And Judah said unto Onan, uh -huh. Go into thy brother's wife right. and marry her. Yep. And raise up, the, her, and raise up seed to the brother, to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in into his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. Uh huh. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore he slew him also. Thank you very much. So that's what it's talking about over in Leviticus. Back to Leviticus. Because the brother's dead, so now he can go to the brother's wife. Right. Mm -hmm. But if the brother was living, living he couldn't, he couldn't uncover his brother what? Nakedness. Nakedness. Or have yeah. sex Sexual with his brother's wife right. while his brother's living. living right. Verse number 17, pick it up, V. Thou shalt not have sexual relationships with a woman and her daughter, neither shall thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to have sexual relations, for they are her kinswoman. It is wickedness. 18. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her to have sexual relations besides the other in her lifetime. Thank you. So both of them can't be living at the same time. Mm -hmm. Correct. You understand? Amen. Thank you very much. Because some of them probably don't understand that. So I can't be married to two, having sex with two sisters, sisters. at the same time right. while they live. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman. To have sexual relations as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. While she's on her what? Period. Period. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Moreover, thou shalt not lay, lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Uh-huh. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou, thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. We'll get to Molech later. Twenty-two. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Now they did this, right? So, Amen. Right? Yeah. Yes. The, the Bible said they did this. God said that Egypt 
and them Canaanites did everything that we're reading about. Mm -hmm. Amen. Keep going. Neither. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Def defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments. And shall not commit any of these abominations. Neither any of your own nation. Nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Moses said what? For all these all abominations. These abominations have the men of the land done which were before you and the land is defiled. Mm -hmm. They say they did everything that we read about. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those Hamites, yes, those Egyptians. Everything we read in Leviticus 18, they did. Amen. Every one of those scriptures we read up until that point, they did every one of them. This word defiled means to be fouled. Those people was contaminated. Mm -hmm. Those were some unclean people. I keep telling y'all they was nasty. I'm not saying that. Just so I can say it, those people was unclean morally. Those was the nastiest people up on the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. These people was contaminated. God said, stay away from them because these people will contaminate you. Mm -hmm. He said, that's why the land spewed them out. S-P-U-E. That word spew, that word spew is the word co, Q-O-W. It means to vomit. So the land had to be sick. Wasn't it? Amen. Amen. The land was yeah. sick, Very sick. Because of those people. Pick it up again at verse number. I want you to notice the word defile in here. Pick it up at verse number 20. V read. Moreover. Thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife. To defile thyself with her. To contaminate yourself. Verse number 23. Again the word defile. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to contaminate thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confused. They did this, didn't they? Amen. When we come back next time and go through this, we're going to read it in our civilization book. Amen. Amen. Verse number 24, the word defile again. Read. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. Go ahead. For in all these the nations are defiled. Which I cast out before you. Who are defiled? What nations are defiled? What <laughs> nations are defiled? What nations are defiled? I told you to hold your place to do the right of yourself. The, the, the what? Hold on. What nations? Hittites, Gergesites, Amorites, the Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites. Thank you very much. They are what? Defiled. They contaminated. Yeah. Stay away from them. That's the warning. Stay away from them nations. They contaminated. They unclean. They foul. Morally. Stay away from them. 24 V. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. Come on. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you and the land is defiled. Who is those that is before them? Who is those that, that, that's in the land before them? The Hittites, the Gergesites, Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. Thank you very much. That's who in the land before they get over there, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. They in the land right then and there as he talking to them, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. You best believe it. Go ahead, verse 28, V. 
that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore, therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance that ye commit not that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy twelve thirty one again, twelve thirty. Deuteronomy twelve thirty. Amen. Twelve thirty. Are you there? Amen. Read Amen. Armor Bell. Take heed to thyself. That thou be not snared by following them. Uh huh. After that, they de- following who? Following the who? Canaanites. Who is the them? The Hittites, the Hittites, the Hittites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Those who come from the lineage of who? Ham. The lineage of Ham, son of who? Canaan. Thank you very much. The lineage of Ham, son of Canaan. They dead it. They 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 uh uh kin to those Egyptians. Mm-hmm. Talk back with me. Amen. You best believe it. Talking about some doggone die walk. I'm talking about the white folk <laughs> trying to pass the bill. Man, we've been freaks all our lives, ain't we? Amen. Amen. Ain't we? Amen. Because we learned it. Shem learned it from uh, Canaan, didn't he? Yeah. Amen. Got down there and did the same thing. You don't believe me? Go to Ezekiel chapter 11. Got down there and did the same thing. Not only did the same thing, they did worse. Did worse. Did worse. Amen. Got down there and did the same thing. Did worse. Ezekiel chapter 11. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Verse number uh, 12. Come on. Uh, Amen. I'm a bear. And you shall know that I am the Lord. For ye have not walked in my statutes. Come on. Neither executed my judgment. Come on. But have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. Thank you much you did. After the manner of the heathen that are round about you. Who was the heathen that was round about them? The, the Jebusites, the Gergesites. Hittites, the Hittites, Gergesites, Amorites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Jebusites. Thank you very much. Let's go to Deuteronomy 12.30. That's the deal. Because we're still in Deuteronomy, right? Amen. They're not in the promised land yet, have they? No. Because Joshua is the one that's going to bring them in, right? Amen. Joshua going to bring them into that promised land. As, 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 as Moses is giving these people these statutes and these judgments. Right now, they over in that land doing everything in Leviticus chapter 18 right now. Amen. They doing it as they doing it in 1490 BC. They in the land yet. Hello? Amen. You best believe it. That's why God's spewing them out the land. Because they don't contaminate the land with their wickedness, right? Amen. You best believe it. It's right here. They did everything we read in here. Everything. You gonna blame it on the white man. No, it ain't the white man. It's us us. And I got to include us now because we learned it from them, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Shem learned it from Canaan, didn't he? Mm-hmm. It's a learned behavior. Yes. Yes. Look at 18 no, chapter do Deuteronomy. Let's go ahead and do, knock these out. I got to put these in here right quick. Get them something to study till we get back to the studio. God's will, we teach them again. Because they don't understand. They don't know. They don't know. Let's go to 18, right? Amen. Verse number 9. Read, V. When thou art coming to the land. The land of who? What land? The Hittites. The land of Canaan. Who in that land? The Hittites, Hittites, Gergesites, Amorites, Amorites, Canaanites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Havites, Jebusites. Jebusites. Thank you very much. We're still in Deuteronomy, ain't we? Amen. This second beginning, ain't it? Amen. You best believe it because those was 20 years old and up, but he already don't kill them. Amen. Right? Amen. Go ahead. Pick it up. 18.9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, come on. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Thank you very much. Let's pick it up again at twenty. Go to twenty. Are you there? Amen. Come on, Carolyn. Give me verse number eighteen. Give me verse number uh oh loud. Have mercy. Give me verse number uh uh oh loud. This my this my verse. This my chapter here. Uh. Ten, Carolyn, pick it up at ten. ten. Show, show you the difference. How God wanted them to stay away from these nasty, stinky people. Right? Mm-hmm. Amen. Y'all remember this, right? Yes. Amen. Come on, Carolyn, ten. When thou comest nigh into a city to fight against it, uh-huh. then proclaim peace unto it. All right, I approach the city, right? Mm-hmm. When I get to that city, I get to the I get to the city of Los Angeles, California. Mm-hmm. When I get to the city of Los Angeles. I 
I get to the city of Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. When I get to the city of Los Angeles, California, got y'all with me, we Israelites. Mm -hmm. First thing I say is what? Peace. 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 Go ahead, Kelly Reed, verse number 11. And it shall be. And if it make the answer of peace. Los Angeles, California. Look back at me and they say what? Peace. peace. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kelly. Open it to thee. Uh -huh. and it shall be. That all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee. Uh -huh. And they shall serve thee. Go ahead. And if it will make no peace with If Los thee, Angeles, California don't want to make no peace with us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Carolyn. But we'll make war against thee. Come on. Then thou shalt besiege We're going to surround Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Carolyn. And when the Lord thy God hath delivered it into thy hand. Los Angeles, Cal Los Angeles. That's the city. Come on. Thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. I kill every male that's in there. Amen. Go ahead, Carolyn. With the women and the little ones. I take the women and the children. And the cattle. I take the cattle. And all that is in the all, city. All, I take the gold, the silver, the money, the food, everything. Go ahead, Carolyn. Even all the spoil thereof. Yeah. Shall thy take unto thyself. Right. And thou shalt eat the spoil of thy enemies. Yeah. Which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Come on. Thus shall thy do unto all the cities which were very far off from thee. Come on. Which are not in the cities of these nations. What nations? Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Come on. But of the cities of these people. These people right here. Which the Lord thy God doth give it thee for inheritance. Uh huh. That shall save alive nothing that breatheth. You kill every one of them. I don't want now one of them alive. Every one of them that breatheth, even the wives and the little ones. That's what the Lord said. Eh? Ain't that what he said? Yes, sir. You kill them Hamites. You kill them. Read, Calvin, verse number 17. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Who? Hittites, the Who? Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. I don't want none of them to stay alive. Hmm. You kill every, because they contaminated. They defile. They morally defile. They unclean. Them some foul people. You kill every one of them. Kill a cattle. Kill the little ones, kill their wives. You kill all of them Egypt. You kill all them Canaanites. That said, everything that breathes. Everything that breathes. Kill the dogs and the cats. The dogs, the cats. The fish. The fish. The fish. Everything. Fish. I don't care what it is. You it, kill everything down there that breathes. Breathe it down. I don't want y'all to take nothing, nothing from those people. Mm -hmm. Those people <laughs> contaminated. Amen. Verse number 16, 17, and 18, Kelly Reed. But the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doeth give it thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. But, but thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. That they teach. Stop! Them. That's a learned behavior because they're going to teach you. Amen. Amen. Uh, how do we how do we get contaminated by them teachers? Teacher. They taught us, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we got contaminated. Just like yeah. them. Go ahead, Carolyn. 18. That they teach you you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. Come on, Bama Bear, chapter 12, verse 30. Read. Chapter 12, verse 30. Chapter 12, verse 30. Amen. Take Please. heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these Gentiles serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Keep going. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. Hmm. For even their sons, their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. 32. What, whatever, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Amen. Amen. Verse number uh, 23. Come on, Carolyn. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you. For they have committed all these things, and therefore I abhor them. Thank you very much. Look at, uh, give me uh, one more scripture. 
Give me 2013, V. 2013? Yeah. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Amen. Amen. Come on, Calvin. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. <laughs> Come on, 2318. <laughs> 2318. Amen. I wasn't finished yet. Go ahead. For all that, that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. All right, 2318. Amen. Read. Thou, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, the price of a dog, into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are an abomination to the Lord thy God. That's it. All right, let's go.